Hi, I'm Claire with Savage Streaming Productions. I'd like to put a shout out for our sponsors, Savage Billiard Apparel, capturing the heart of pool with their message, live fearless, play savage. Legends Billiard Room and Catfish Lou's off 217 on Allen in Beaverton. In the first two years of operation, Catfish Lou's was awarded both the 2017 and 2018 Muddy Award for Best Venue by the Cascade Blues Association. As of 2019, they've added Legends Billiard Room. Legends Billiard Room is filled with 20, 7-foot, and 6, 9-foot diamond tables, all of them brand new. Legends provides a place for both adults and minors to play pool and compete in tournaments seven days a week. Littman Lights. Littman Lights are the official pool table lights for the Western BCA regional events and Q Sports International. If you haven't played under Littman Lights, you are really missing out. The Billiard Shop in Aloha, a great resource in the Oregon community for anything pool related, such as tables, cues, and a full range of pool accessories. The Billiard Shop currently has the new Gabriel's Pool Table on display. Gabriel's Billiards makes the official table used in the Three Cushion Billiards World Championships. Now they make the pool version of the table. Stop by the Billiard Shop in Aloha and experience pool on a whole new level. Hey folks, uh, Mark here with Savage Streaming Productions again. Um, you, obviously you get to see Ray Cunningham and myself and Tracy um, out uh, streaming and doing a lot of podcasts uh, once a week. Um, but we are, because our mission statement is pursuing life's passions. And whatever it, that be, hunting, fishing, obviously we're all pool players that own the company. My wife, me, Ray Cunningham, Tracy Cunningham, Claire, uh, we're all pool players. And that's why we kind of focus in on pool. Uh, but we also do quite a bit of other stuff. So obviously with the whole coronavirus thing, um, uh, babe, can you do a kind of like just across the beach? Uh, we're here at Frenchman's Bar. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a beautiful day out here. Um, it, it's like 60 something degrees. Uh, we're definitely six feet away from everybody else. And, you know, uh, if my wife gets Corona, she's only going to affect me and I'm going to affect her. I think that's why they call it, uh, in sickness and in health, because if I go down, she goes down with me. <laughs> Just kidding, babe. So, um, we're out here at Frenchman's Bar. We're going to spend a little bit of time. The tide is kind of weird right now. Um, it's kind of at a lull. Uh, right now, I'm at work at Frenchman's Bar up here um, in Vancouver, Washington. And normally you want the outgoing tide. Um, right now it's an incoming tide, but it's only a plus two. So it's really not moving that strong, which really isn't that good for fishing. You want a pretty strong, uh, like a six or an eight foot swing on the tide, on an outgoing tide. So it's making your bait move really in a, in a better action down in the water column. Um, but you know what? We were sitting at home, and uh, um, I think she's getting a little irritated with me. So we thought we'd come outside and uh, do a different kind of video stream. So I'm going to show you how I rig up um, for a spring Chinook. I haven't really seen anybody else do it the way that I do it off the bank. Obviously, I'm not in a boat right now. Um, we're off the bank. Um, and I haven't really seen too many people. I haven't seen any YouTubers out there that record stuff, rig it the way I do on the bank. So I'm going to try to show you what I do. And I've been pretty successful at it. I use a couple different rigs. I use a 5-inch pink worm with a chartreuse spade tail. Uh, today I am going to use frozen herring. And normally you would use this on the boat. Um, and you cut plug it and um, you cut the head off at, a, at an angle and so it's spinning in the water. That's why 
uh, the water really not kind of moving because you want this I'm gonna twist it like this because you want it spinning in the water kind of erratically so uh, normally in a boat you're gonna use blue label herring which is bigger um, this is red label which is smaller which is better on the bank um, so got my herring um, I'm using four rot four rot kamikaze hooks uh, in the state of Washington they have to be barbless so these are barbless hooks so you don't have to pinch the barb down I'm going to use a moocher rig so you're going to need two hooks um, if you haven't tied a moocher rig before they, you can buy them in the store where they're already pre-tied um, I don't like those uh, because I'm using and some might say oh man that's pretty heavy line I'm using uh, 40 pound Maxima Ultra Green. Um, I like the heavier line because heavier the line, the the more your line will float in the water. So the lighter the line, the heavy uh, it, it's going to start sinking your bait. So 40 pound Ultra Green Maxima. So about three feet. I'm not going to use probably all of that three feet on the leader. You need your moocher rig hooks. Uh, if you don't know how to tie a moocher rig, there's tons of it out there on YouTube on how to tie moocher rigs. So, I don't want to get sand in the other herring. So, um, you know, you just start off here. And then you're going to make. Five, five twists around the shank of the hook. I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. Um, and then you loop it around the shank of the hook again four or five times. And then put a little bit of spit on there. We're, we will eventually cut that tag end off. So there's one hook. This is what makes it a mucho rig hook. Is your so this is your tag hook. This is your primary hook. So usually you want it to where that trail hook is kind of back there at the end of the tail like that uh, a lot of people wear gloves like black gloves like uh, especially when we have wives and they had to smell us and our herring scent hands afterwards which my wife hates um, well and plus you know you don't want the human scent on your bait usually. I, I, I haven't noticed a problem hooking fish, but uh, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. So this is kind of the tricky part. Uh, I've done these ties so many times that um, I can almost do this blindfolded. Um, getting that tag hook around the line. So. That is a mucho rig hook setup. It, it does take some practice uh, until you can get it down. So you want to cut off your tag out without hooking yourself. Okay, so there we go. Here's our mucho rig set up. So in this route, you can use a sliding hook system where the first hook slides 
Um, I do not like those um, because when a fish eats it and turns its head, a lot of times that first hook can slide down and you don't get a good hook set. So what you do is you just put, you don't have to put your bait threader all the way down, but you can buy these bait threaders at obviously any tackle store, but they're pro-cure bait threaders. Uh, they're meant so that you can thread sand shrimp or prawns or whatever. So now I got my line in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put right along the spine. I can feel the spine. I'm just going to go right along the spine. And what I am hoping to do is get it right perfectly like that. So your line is going to come out just like that. And you pull your line through and what I like to do very, very carefully is kind of get this hook buried in there like that. So now you got your tag hook. So here's the thing. You want this thing to spin. So you need to you need to bend this herring. Because if it's just straight, it's just it's just gonna sink down to the bottom and it's not gonna move. You want it to spin in the water and look like a wounded uh, bait when they're out in the ocean, because that's what they do. They don't just eat the whole herring, the whole pot of salmon, just start going charging into the herring, and then they wound them, and then they look for the herring to be spinning, and that's the indicator that they're wounded. That's what a lot of uh, fish out in the ocean, that's what they do. That's what salmon do. So. Uh, now that we got that, um, so what we need to do is put a bead so on there like so and then a bobber stopper so instead of having to use a sliding hook system um, I'm going to use a bobber stopper and you need this little bee right here And then you slide your bobber stopper on there. Take it off a little black plastic thing, like that. Then you cinch down the tag ends, like so. And you want it pretty snug. Um, I, when it swells up in the water, it will become tighter. So the reason why I'm doing that is so now I can kind of pinch it like that. And now it's bent. So instead of straight, now the herring is at a bend. So now when it's in the water, it's going to turn like, like that. Instead of just sitting there like this in the current, it will turn. So that's why you use the bobber stopper like that. And you can kind of adjust it um, to how much you want to turn. I want it to turn pretty quick. So, um, cut off your tag ends. So, and so here's another thing, uh, the current 
isn't really moving that much because I'm looking at a log out there and how you can tell if the current's really moving like there's debris usually flowing down the river and I've been watching this log out there and it's been moving towards the east normally when we're on the bank you want it to move to the west like towards the ocean um, and right now it's hoard, uh, heading towards like downtown Vancouver, downtown Portland. Um, but you know what? We're already out here, so we're going to give it a whirl. So we got that. We need another bead because I want it to float. So there's my next bead. Now I'm gonna stick a spinning glow. And I got like 5,000 spinning glows. I don't know why. I think it's just uh, every time I go to a tackle store, uh, I see shiny stuff at the tackle store, like a lot of fishermen. And I'm just like, oh man, I need to buy that. But I always use this one. This is really the only one that I use. So it's a size six spinning glow with chartreuse, uh, marlar wings, uh, chartreuse front, back, and um, it's UV. So uh, where we're gonna be fishing about 150 feet out, um, there's a ledge right out here. And I found it a long time ago on Navionics map. Um, and so that's where I'm trying to hit is that ledge. It's about 18, 19 feet deep. Um, I can obviously cast it a lot further than that, but we're fishing for a spring chinook and not fall chinook. So um, I, I've caught them um, only casting, oh, not even really casting, just pitching out there like 60 feet with the same rig. Um, but we're not, we're going to cast a little bit further out today so I can maybe possibly catch the faster current. So that's what the rig looks like right there. Um, I've done really, really well with this rig, just casting out there. And it's really durable. Uh, it lasts for a long time. Uh, there isn't too much debris flowing down the river, so you really don't have to check it that much. And uh, I've caught a lot of fish off the bank just casting this rig out there. Um, when I've seen a lot of other people out here, when it's prime time out here, um, and there isn't a coronavirus going on, there'll be rods every almost 10 feet all the way down the bank. Um, but it's still early in the season, so, um, but that's the rig. So what I do, that thing is ready to fish. I am going to add a little bit something to that as well. Um, This is called bad, uh, no, I don't know if I can say it because I don't, <laughs> but it's called uh, bad AZZ dye, uh, liquid blast. It's a UV liquid bait. I'm gonna put some, not on the whole entire herring, just on the tail of it. So when it's spitting, it's adding another attraction to it. Um, and this is chartreuse, chartreuse lime. Uh, so I will add that to the end of the tail of it. And then... So we're casting into sand. Normally I use a sliding rig hook. Um, normally when I'm casting the only problem with the sliding uh, where you have your dropper on a slide, uh, sometimes it can get tangled up in your main line. That's another reason why I like to use 40 Ultra Green. It doesn't get as snagged up into your main line uh, when it's heavier. So uh, in sand, uh, I like to use a spreader and rock always a slider uh, because you're hoping that the weight busts off and you still will catch the fish. If you have a heavy dropper line, 
uh, your weight will just stay stuck and you can't snap the weight off in the rocks and most likely you're going to lose your fish if you're using a, a T slider. So I'm using a T, T spreader right now. Um, here's the thing, the important thing to remember. You always want, you can see that this is a higher side than this side. You want the higher side on the top. So your dropper line is going to go this way and this way is going to go to the main line. like 500 knots out there you can use whatever obviously that you like um, I've always just kind of used the fisherman's knot and I've always just stayed with that knot because uh, uh, I've always used it uh, so I got that so now I need my dropper leader uh, which is going to be tied to the weight so and when they a lot of fishermen who've caught and snook out here um, when they cut open the belly a lot of them will find herring inside the belly and not with hooks or anything like whole herring or just like the herring heads uh, many, many times. And so when we're trolling in a boat, we only use like an 18 inch dropper with a flasher or whatever you're using as your flasher or pro troll, whatever, um, with your herring or spinner. It's pretty much dragging the bottom, your herring. So you pretty much want this down low next to the ground in the water column. Oh, you know what? I think Ashley has one ready to go. Ready to go with this dropper line. I don't know where it's at, so we're just going to use this. Oh, by the way, you're not supposed to cut fishing line with your teeth. Um, don't do that. Okay, so I like to use a dual lock. Um, because if I need to change out the weight on my pyramid weight, it's really easy to do. So... I'm going to use about that much. much. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, you definitely never want to cut 40 pound mono with your teeth. It's gonna, it's gonna hurt. So, 
Um, and we're almost ready to go. So, last, I put this in a plastic bag because I just want to give you a heads up. If you spill this on your clothes, um, or really uh, like anything that's cloth, it's there. You're, it's not coming out. It, it's pretty strong. So all I'm gonna do is kind of put some on the end of this thing, like so. All it is is an attractor. So when that thing is spinning in the water, that tail just gives them something else to look at. Um, so that they can hone in on it. So that's the setup. This is a pretty long leader. I'm purposely putting a really long leader on there so that bait really can move around in the water. Normally I'd probably make it a little bit shorter like here uh, if the current's really pushing out there really hard um, because I know that bait's going to spin but since we got a two foot swing and it's <laughs> It's the wrong tide. It's an incoming tide on a plus 2.3. Um, I'm going to use a longer leader. Now all we have to do is put our weight on there. Um, I have different size weights. Um, I have eight sixes, tens, I mean, all the way up to sixteens. Um, I'm using a six because the current really isn't moving. Sometimes the current on a nine, ten foot, oh, there's a bad boat. Um, on a nine, ten foot swing, um, you're going to need like 12, 14 ounces to get that weight to stick. Um, so once again, here's the main line. Here's my spreader. What do you think, babe? Would you eat that if you were a little fishy? Would you eat that? No. Okay. So, uh, that's it. And that thing's going to spin in the water. And uh, we're going to cut it off here. And hopefully we hook one. But hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer. I mean, my first passion, obviously I love playing pool. Uh, I haven't been able to play any for quite some time um, but my first passion when growing up was fishing I'm sure I'm not alone so if you have any rigs um, I kind of kept this one a secret for a long time um, but off of the bank casting and it's really durable you can cast this thing and it won't fall, uh, fly off the hook so I uh, just wanted to show you what I was doing using if you have any comments put them in below thank you